Thank you so much for joining us on today's podcast. Yep. We have a very awesome part two coming part your way. B. Part two. So last week, Joshua, he interviewed me mm-hmm. about past stuff with videography and things of that nature. And it is my turn to interview mm. my brother, <laughs> Josh. Um, I have written down a few questions here. Uh and answer them as best as you can. I am entitling this episode, The Thoughts and Feelings of Josh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I thought was your first question. The reason, yeah, it's not, it's the title. The reason why is because in the past, mm-hmm. it's always been, and we talked about this on the Spotify Midnight Special version with the Gordons. You observed and you didn't share thoughts and feelings very often when you were young, and it's still kind of difficult to get you to do that today in some yeah. fashion. Um, when you do it, you feel really good and you're excited. You're like, I express myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, so I'm going to try to get you to express yourself on the podcast today and tell me about okay. things that I was said, there for mostly that you had thoughts and feelings about that you didn't share. Okay. If okay. you cry in this episode, it'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm down for a good cry. <laughs> Don't force a cry. I'm a little overdue. Don't force a cry. All right. So, tell us briefly about the two times you broke your arm. Okay. So the first time wasn't as bad as the second time. The first time we were playing football out in the front yard. Mm-hmm. Just We were having fun. Um, we were a little bored, so we wanted to play football. Played football. You, I remember you like, just tackled me, and I fell backwards, put my arms on the ground to stop myself, and just didn't completely snap my arm but cracked the bone mm-hmm. so it was a break but it yes. was a crack and i didn't have to have like a huge hard cast because it was just a crack in the bone mm-hmm. that it 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 was it hurt but it was a crack it okay. wasn't that bad that's the first time the second time was a lot worse um <laughs> we've talked about this on an episode before it was old season, season one it's old um I we were at a friend's house actually with Tim Gordon who was on the midnight special last week. Mm-hmm. We meet we got we were riding four wheelers. Me and him collided. I flew off, broke my arm. He rolled off, and the four wheeler rolled on top of him. Everybody ran to him thinking that he, <laughs> he was, was a lot more hurt. He was a lot worse. I did not see him or even know what was going on with him because i just i flew off tried to stop myself again but it was such it was it wasn't like trying to stop myself because it happened so fast it was reactionary yeah protect your face yeah it just it was like it no it wasn't even reactionary because it was just something my arms were kind of there okay and it happened wow um I remember hitting the ground and just sliding so far because Mm -hmm. I was going so fast. And then I got up and I'm like, oh, crap. My arm is like a limp noodle. (laughs) And And by that, you mean the two bones in your forearm broke. Well, actually, it broke three times. It broke three times. But it looked like your whole arm, the brace that goes through your freaking forearm, Mm -hmm. which did, just snapped. And half of your forearm was just hanging straight down. Yeah. It It was was, unnatural to see. It was being held on by skin and muscle. And tendons. Yeah. Ugh. The the structure was gone. Yeah. It was broken. And that was weird. The worst part was like, I remember you kept saying, oh man, I got to tell Miss Hutto (laughs) because it was at our friend's house. The thing that was going through my mind at the time I was going in shock because it's such a bad injury. But the thing mainly I remember, I don't remember a lot because I was going into shock, but the only small thing that I remember was 
me, it was at the beginning of the summer, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm not going to be able to do anything this summer. <laughs> I had, like, I was going to go to camp. I was going to do all this stuff. And, and then instantly, you're instantly, not doing it. I couldn't. I mean, I went, I ended up going to one camp, the Wilds, but we had, like, a Boy Scout camp that was, they were going to be canoeing for, like, four days straight you down can't the canoe river with a broken arm can't canoe with a broken yeah because you can't get the cast wet most of the and time and you also can't even paddle yeah you know that's too much pressure too much work on that arm so i ended up i you ended up going on that trip and i yeah. never got to which might be a blessing we did do some fun stuff but we all were burnt with second and third degree burns from the sun on that mm. trip so there was like an overcast shadow of like oh we are all in so much pain from yeah. that trip so I just remember as soon as it happened, I'm like, crap, not going to be able to do anything this summer. It's going to be bad. Okay. So you're, what was the, what was that feeling real quick? What was that feeling? Was it just like sad, angry, um, a mild bummer? What was it? Uh, a little bit sad. I mean, and we briefly, briefly talked about this on a midnight special one time mm -hmm. with the go Force, but to me. Here, just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. To, a lot of things, and this is kind of my journey into becoming an adult. Um, a lot of things has happened to me as a young kid, a teen, to going to my adult years, to where things have just happened, mm -hmm. and it seemed like I'm not just trying to be like, "Oh, poor me," but. It did always happen kind of to me. I mean, you can test to this. You were always getting hurt. I was the one always getting hurt. So it was like another thing during the summer. It's like, oh, man, the summer's another summer. I just mm -hmm. got to clock in and not do anything. Gotcha. But, so a little bit of disappointment, but I still got to actually, I got to go to the wild. So I had fun. I did some things, but wasn't able to do everything. Um, what might be your favorite childhood moment in your life? You know, mm -hmm. if you could label something your favorite childhood moment, what would it be? Favorite childhood moment. Maybe a day, maybe a conversation, maybe, maybe a glance at a beautiful dame. <laughs> from across the room <laughs> what was it um no not not any beautiful dame because <laughs> i was very goofy with the the women yeah. growing up and the gordons contested this they said that on the midnight special awkward and goofy yeah i was very awkward and goofy i mean to this day i'm still a little bit but I got I got a little bit of stuff. I'm but a, that's I'm not the question. Thing. It's not the question. The question is, what might be your favorite, favorite moment, memory? Moment your favorite memory, memory, yeah. Memory moment. <sighs> and I, it, it doesn't. You don't have to decide. Like, I don't. I don't have like a specific time, but I remember being in Boy Scouts, having some fun times. I mean, we didn't do that much because we were homeschooled. We had friends but most of our friends were in boy scouts too mm -hmm. so going on boy scout trips there i mean there was some good times there was some bad times in boy scouts mm -hmm. but there was some good times yeah so if you're saying if you if it was a good moment it would probably be in boy scouts yeah boy scouts maybe if i was going to pinpoint one specific moment probably it was really bad, but it was like one of those really bad moments where you get to bond with people and have an amazing time. What was it? It's probably when we were hiking on the AT with the double rest. <laughs> that was a good moment? That it, it just sticks out in my memory as something that's so memorable and was good. Okay. You know? Yeah, so the double rest was, um, was we all had hammocks and mine ripped. Well, not exclusively that, but just that trip in general. Okay, so the trip where we all had hammocks. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of adventures on that trip. Yeah. Um, I think we've talked about that before. Uh, if you're a regular listener, you probably n have heard some stories from that. But, okay. Um, or that night, I don't know if you remember this, that night we 
we hiked to the top of the mountain. We were kind of a, like bald with a rock, and we all sat on that rock. Yes. Do you remember that, yes, that night sure. with the rock? For sure. Which was that was after your you the double rest happened and yeah your, that was towards the broke. end wasn't that like the last night or yeah. something we were all sitting on a rock I, I had I had something ma- speaking of the at I had freaking instant mashed potatoes and mm-hmm. my beef jerky mixed up into a little container it, I don't remember the whole conversation but it had something to do with a mermaid with braces do you remember that <laughs> no <Do> you, yes <laughs> <laughs> like. Would you kiss a mermaid if she had braces kind yes. of thing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I th- we were probably a little delusional when we were being like, mermaids are the most beautiful thing on earth. Yeah. But they're not even on earth. So it was, yeah, we were definitely delirious, but it had something to do with a mermaid and braces. That's all <laughs> I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> we had been hiking like 12 miles uphill that day or something. Yeah, that was a so long day. It's a, it's hard to stay sane when you're exhausted with a big pack on your back yeah um you mentioned there were some bad times in boy scouts um you talked a little bit about some feelings and thoughts with good times what might be something since you brought up boy scouts what is some things that might be salty you know from from being in boy scouts I don't want to call out any individual personally because so it's probably an experience with an individual that made it salty. Yes and no. Um, I don't want to call it anybody individual and say like they were in the wrong, I was in the wrong, or what. It was probably just the situation mm-hmm. all around. But I remember exclusively me and Tim one time. It was the, we. This was right after a trip. Um, they they pulled aside me and Tim, and Tim was always a troublemaker, so people knew that. Yeah. But they exclusively pulled aside me and Tim and said, "It's like a couple scoutmasters. We had a meeting, and they <laughs> said if we didn't get our act together, we couldn't get our eagle because we had. I mean, we were growing up. We were just trying to have fun. We we at that point, I you didn't were too really, rowdy. Yeah, too rowdy, and I really wasn't taking getting my ego and just being responsibility seriously i was there to have fun to be honest so it was kind of my fault um but they pulled us aside and said if you don't get your act together and take this seriously you're not going to get your ego because you're not worthy to get your ego you're not um treating it with the respect that it's deserved so i just remember coming away from that being so salty and like I w- I don't even want to get my eagle at that point. If there that's what it's going to entail. Mm-hmm. Looking back now because I'm I've matured yeah. since then. Yeah. I realize it was my fault mostly. I wouldn't say all my fault, but it was probably overreaction from Yes. Scout it was masters. an overreaction from a scoutmaster expecting something of a boy who just wanted to have fun. Yeah. I mean, that's all it was. Yeah. But it, at that point, it it kind of made me like not want to become an eagle because I was just salty about it mm-hmm. and it's stubborn and stubborn. So yeah. yeah, but it was it was my fault. I mean, I was a little boy at that point. Yeah, yeah, but that's good. You did get your eagle. Mm-hmm. Um, switching gears to filmmaking, what actions? throughout your career since deciding to get into filmmaking up to this point have guided you to where you are today what actions specifically actions actions and filmmaking yes i i will say and this is kind of our relationship can I'll throw in as a brother relationship too mm-hmm. and including in that I mean it our personalities and we've talked about this briefly on the podcast maybe season one on our dynamic with each other mm-hmm. our personalities have always been you most of the time have a big picture mm-hmm. and I'm always kind of the the person who comes behind and says, this needs to get done, this, 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 this. Yes. To get this big picture accomplished. And that's always been my personality and your personality and how our dynamic as brothers work. Yeah. So 
coming into filmmaking and how that evolves with us, just our dynamic, me personally, um, I know Dying of the Leaves and, well, actually this first started at the very tail end of the boxing film. I don't even remember what it's called. The one uh, with, uh, No Gordon. Handled. Handled. I remember you came to me overwhelmed and you were like, I don't know how to make this work. <laughs> and I said, this needs to get done. This needs to get done. This needs to get done. Yeah. But if it doesn't, it's not going to work. I remember telling you that. And I said, maybe you should just drop this project. We can regroup and kind of start again on a different project. Yeah. And eventually you agreed because it was just overwhelming. You didn't, couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So kind of most films, not all of them, I wasn't involved with Path the Crimson, but most of our films past that, like The Hike and, and Dying, Dying of the Leaves. I've always, and this is my personality, I've taken more of a producer mm -hmm. um, perspective to where saying this what's what we need for the day this is what we need to get the film accomplished yes even the day of when we're on sh when we're shooting most of the time you're like okay we're gonna get this shot where you're looking at the shot list and you're thinking what needs to get accomplished yeah and most of the time i i'll come to you and be like hey you need to keep going you need to get this accomplished you need to work a little bit faster so we can get to the next thing because we're running behind or i'll come to you and say okay you're thinking we're wanting to do this next correct and i'm mm -hmm. like yes so how can me personally or get some people together to get this to be ready to do it next yeah. um i remember a big thing just like carrying equipment getting equipment from point A to point B with, <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Or just being like, hey, do you want me to start doing this so it'll be ready once you're ready to film that? And that's that's just our dynamic as brothers has helped us as film partners or making films in general. Yes. Um, what film that you've worked on or maybe video media in general mm -hmm. might be your favorite my favorite yes I mean I haven't been I mean when it comes to like bigger projects probably probably dying in the leaves I mean that was our latest film that was big what about it did you yeah. enjoy? Like, what about it was important to you, you know? I mean, Dying at least in general was just, it was important for both of us, for the company, for learning how to make a a short film that was a little bit longer. Yeah, it was like 52 minutes long. Yeah, so, I mean, even after post-production, just trying to get everything accomplished, we would... I remember at that point we were having like, were we calling each other every Monday? Was that when we started that? Yeah. We yeah. started having video chats or video meetings every Monday, which actually is kind of the beginning of the podcast, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even though we weren't filming it. I think you had the idea of like, well, let's, let's have these meetings so, in more of a structured topical way on video. <laughs> so we can talk about what we got accomplished that week regarding dying leaves what do we still need to do what do you what did you do and what can i help you on yeah so yeah. we started that actually on monday and that kind of bled into the podcast a little bit absolutely how much time we at i got a question i'm gonna ask that we're and right under 20 all right okay we're gonna finish off this episode with this question Okay. Because I know this question is something you struggle with. So I want you to, as best you can, explain to the audience and relay your feelings about this mm -hmm. and your current perspective. Um, if you would, would you please tell the people the inner struggle you've had about not doing 
the same things as me because you were the younger brother. Mm-hmm. Naturally, it may seem as if you're following in my footsteps, but that's not the truth. So tell people about that inner struggle. Tell people about your perspective on that because we've had extensive many conversations about this that a lot of people if they just if they just view us from the outside they'll be like yeah. oh yeah you know maybe they've thought of these thoughts on their own well starting off when it comes to filmmaking i mean well not just filmmaking just starting off in general we're brothers mm-hmm. so even growing up there's been things where we just kind of forced to do mm-hmm. i mean you went into boy scouts I'm like, I'll go into Boy Scouts because it's going to be fun and something I want to do, which it was, but it was like, oh, just went to Boy Scouts first yes. type thing. And then I remember the first film we did, Bamboo Vengeance, mm-hmm. Fight the Good Fight with our good friend Seth Parrish. You, I wasn't involved with that as much as because you guys came up with a skit for summer camp. That's how it started out. Yes. And you guys created this skit, and then you're like, okay, we're going to do the cinematography merit badge, and this is go- what we're going to do. I think it was actually Seth's idea. Yeah. To create it into a film. Mm-hmm. After that, it our passion in filmmaking it didn't die but it was kind of dwindled when we didn't have a camera we didn't do all this we didn't we weren't doing anything kind of for a short period of time it wasn't very long but it was a short period of time yes and then we decided to well actually i i can't remember how it all kind of spawned but essentially i agreed and i wanted to buy a digital camera or or I don't even know, but I think I was the first one to kind of initiate to buy this digital camera mm-hmm. and saying we should buy this camera so we can create films, basically, or just even small projects. And that was the purple Coolpix camera, the well, digital we, camera. We had that before dying of, or before Fight the Good Fight. Because remember the last couple shots of the video, we used that cool pics camera. Okay, but it was. I kind think you're of... talking about the silver camera, the Sony one we had. Okay, maybe. I mean, it it was kind of all jumbled in there, but, and I was kind of the inspirational yeah person to say, hey, let's do this. And then after that, we kind of just went hand in hand making film, short films, with friends and stuff like that. But then, yes, because you were older, you decided to go and do film school after high school Mm -hmm. so yes um you did go to film school first but you but i was i don't want to say it was only me because we were both kind of hand in hand but i was very inspirational in saying i want to buy this camera so we can get into filmmaking because that would be really cool and something that would be fun yeah um what are your thoughts about about maybe the past i don't know since you got out of school or maybe even when you were deciding to go to school from then on what have been your thoughts and emotions about am i because we we've talked about this at length Mm -hmm. do people just see me as following in your footsteps how people perceive you (laughs) what your direction is yeah i mean we've always wanted to start a company and do Mm -hmm. something with filmmaking so it has been kind of odd where you moved to virginia too yeah and then i moved because that's the logical thing we need to be in the same place yeah Yes, it is. It feels kind of weird sometimes, and we have had conversations. I don't want to do this. I don't want to. I mean, one of the big things coming out of school, you went and had an internship at WBTV. <laughs> I didn't have an internship, but I got a job right out of school at working WBT. at WBTV. <laughs> so it was kind of the same thing. And then it's in the ballpark of the same thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, very close. I mean. 
we i mean our personalities are definitely not the same mm-hmm. we definitely i mean constantly you guys don't see this on camera as much but we're butting heads constantly it's kind of funny sometimes Mackenzie joseph's wife <laughs> she'll come in the room and be like it's quiet you guys are having a fight about something <laughs> it's just because we're like secretly raging and being like oh man joshua's comment doesn't hurt my feelings just pisses me off because i mean he doesn't have a clear picture of what i'm trying to communicate with him and why i want to do this you know what i mean yeah those are the kind of thoughts it's not like and you know. it i mean is throwing off a little bit of from the original question but even since i've come here to virginia you moved to Columbia before, like, shortly after you got out of school. And, I mean, yeah, you did About a, a year. live there. I worked but at it. Well, a year, and a year and nine months. You were yeah. at the Wilds, and then you went to Columbia. So we never really, yeah, we had um, a relationship when we talked over the phone. I even saw you. I would come down to Columbia sometimes. But we never were in the same place until I moved here to Virginia. Mm-hmm. So the dynamic between us was a slap in the face it was a slap in the face face hard which i didn't expect because i'm like oh we're an adults we can we've talked and had a business relationship to this point yeah but shortly after you move here and we're seeing each other on a regular basis we're already bickering yeah because like we were boys yeah because it was we had never lived in the same place as adults yeah we definitely had to get over that barrier Mm -hmm. and I mean, that was weird. <laughs> to this day, it's weird just being in the same place still. Yeah. It, it's strange that you live right down the road. Not even down the road. We live <laughs> Not in even the down same. the road. We live like right down the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just... Live in the same apartment complex. We didn't do that on purpose, but that just how life... It just works. It just worked. guided itself yeah. and it just worked. So our dynamic has always been... Is very different, but trying to come up with the same goal and... And having different ideas about that goal. Very different, yes. I think one of the big things, seeing you and and the struggle you've had with people seeing you through the eyes of following in my footsteps, specifically that issue, um, is very much not true. Joshua, throughout this whole process it's literally simply because i'm older and so i've done a few things like two years before he did um josh was also dealt with the sickness and that that was a big thing that he had to go through that we've talked about on a podcast that i i was observing and relatively there for but not understanding in any sense of what he was going through yeah can i say something that i don't mean to mean this as just tooting my own horn Uh because this might seem a little bit would you say i mean even sometimes the majority of the time i wouldn't say all the time because you do have your own ideas and you're we're very we're both very leadership Mm mindseted we both have a very leadership mindset with just um that personality but i will say i have a stronger one sometimes so even some things that we do a lot of things that we do with outside of wise works Mm -hmm. most of the time it's kind of my idea i mean i feel like i'm as the younger brother leading sometimes and i'm not saying that as a boasting way like oh i'm the leader you you definitely are that same way that's why we butt heads so much sometimes Mm -hmm. but there's things that i'm leading even as a younger brother and doing i mean on a regular basis i come over and you're wearing my shirt because (laughs) because and i'm like what the heck are you wearing my shirt for he's like well you got a good style i'm gonna (laughs) gonna take your clothes why would i try to put effort forward to make my own style or wear clothes that are that look nice on me when joshua just has clothes and i can just take them from him (laughs) that that's logical to me hmm I think, um, honestly, the biggest thing is just uh, 
it's a mix between I've just happened to either take an ideas from Joshua and just happened to do them first or um, or just Josh was looking for direction and I just encourage him to do something like go to the program at school you know things of that nature mm-hmm. where Josh was like I want to get into filmmaking what do you think I should do like does it what you did seem to work and I'm like I think it's working so you should do the same thing you know what I mean mm-hmm. um, it's just simply logical stuff like that um, but I know you've struggled with being viewed in that light so I wanted to get you to talk about it a little bit okay you think i've shed some light on that i think you're not great at talking about feelings <laughs> i'm not i i'm horrible at when it comes to very emotional stuff to yeah. just showing my true you're really emotion. good at showing thoughts but not feelings and so you got 50 mm-hmm. percent of this episode's title in the bag <laughs> <laughs> define 50 percent. Well, you got the thoughts down okay this one's thoughts and feelings of josh okay well maybe we'll try again on another podcast yeah to get joshua to share his feelings but until then what do we got joshua we got spotify is that what we're talking about yeah we got audio only on spotify yes and we also have a show called midnight special on Spotify on yes. Friday night. Yes, we do. And we also have... And we have the main two video uh, podcasts are here or, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, they're here on YouTube. We come out with two a week. Um, the yeah. audio versions are out on Spotify. I think we should continue this, but maybe on a midnight special. Maybe on a midnight special. I like that. Maybe I should get the Go Force to... If you don't know who the Go Force is, go watch the Midnight Special. You might figure it out. But I think we should get Wyatt and Jamark to be the questionnaire okay. on this, For both on this topic. Because I don't think I'm going to have the right perspective to get something out of you. Okay. Or maybe we should do it this week with our good friend Seth Parrish. Because he knows us better than knows us both better than the Go Force mate. Maybe we can touch on it. Yeah. I think Seth's going to have a lot to say, though, for his first time on the show. <laughs> okay. And it might not want to be diving really deep into your feelings okay. <laughs> about this. Okay. But we'll do it at some point with somebody that will have something good to say or ask you. Yeah. Until then, we really appreciate you watching. Um, just as a quick teaser, we just came out with an episode that is a interview with Dustin. He's a... F- Indie filmmaker, very good conversation about a short film that he is currently working on and is hopefully going to be coming out with in the next few months. Definitely go watch that episode. That was a yeah. good time, good conversation. Um, and uh, and yeah, just enjoy the content we put out here each and every week. We really appreciate you supporting us. Um, we're here to make geeks out of you for our content. Yeah, And we love that you're here. Anyways, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the very next video.